Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome. I'm Carissa, I am a Canadian flight attendant who lives overseas, so I commute. Since this channel has started, I have gotten a lot of repeat questions, so I figured there is no time like the present to do a Q and A video since I have not done one yet. So I'm just gonna jump right on into it with question uh, one. I did put a poll up on Instagram and saved a bunch of the questions. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should go follow me because it is a party over there. Okay, so any advice for my first flight? I'm very nervous. Okay, first of all, Welcome to the Sky family, that is so exciting. And yes, it is nerve wracking being on your very first flight, but I promise you the crew is always there for each other. Whenever someone asks me this question, I always just say, tell the crew you're new that it's your first flight or your first month flying, first week flying, whatever. You truly do work as a team and we're all there for each other. I would go over the aircraft before you fly, before your work, know where your safety equipment is, and just go over the basics of whatever aircraft that is, just so it's all fresh in your mind. But honestly, just be you and enjoy your first flight. What eyeliner do I use? Be right back. This is just a Sephora eyeliner. I think it's called the colorful Wink It Felt liner. I just like it because the tip is really pointy. It's not focusing, but you get the idea. If you try it, let me know. May the wings of your eyeliner always be even. Amen. Next question. Do you miss Canada? No and yes. I think I travel back and forth enough that I don't have time to really miss it, but sometimes I do miss the elements of the city life versus here it is very small and quiet and I love that aspect very much, but sometimes I just want some of that vibrant city energy. But then if I miss it too much, I just go travel, so. How is the training? Does the company pay to stay at a hotel? Tips about training, please. So I get asked for training tips a lot of the time. So I actually made a video about it, which I will link in the description. So go watch that because I have some good tips there. I didn't have to go to a hotel because I trained in my home base, but I do believe, I don't know about every airline, but I think most airlines do put you up in a hotel if you have to go to a different place for training. I don't know of any airline that doesn't, but maybe that's a thing, but I don't think so. The training was one of the most difficult things I've ever done, certainly professionally, but it's also the most rewarding thing I have ever done. And you go through training and meet the most incredible people that you become fast friends with. You are all in it together and you definitely form a special bond with these people that will probably be your friends for the rest of your life because training's just so intense. Not gonna lie, it's not easy. For training tips, I wrote a few things down so I don't forget, but setting timers and strict limits on your phone is a big help. Tell your family, tell your friends that you are off the grid until you're done training. You literally just put yourself on airplane mode and I mean, why not? Because most of your career are gonna be on airplane mode. So it gets yourself into practice. When you're in training, you have to think there is no plan B no backup job, no backup plan. You just put your head, heart, and soul into all of training and you will have nothing to worry about. Flashcards are really helpful. I also really recommend getting a study group. Because of the way I learn is very different on my own versus a group, I would find myself studying all the things that my friends weren't. I would hyper-focus on really random things. And then when I'd study with them, I would pick up on the things that they were studying. So I benefited them and they benefited me. It really takes all kinds of personalities and learning styles to get what you need. And I found that being in a group really helped me. You need to sleep at night as much as you possibly can. And I know it's not realistic to have a long sleep, but if you can try to have seven hours a night, that will make a world of difference. So put the phone down and sleep. At the end of the day, know that if you just put your head down and study, you will do fantastic. Are you Vancouver based? Yes, I am. I'm barely there, but 
I am based there. I just graduated to become a flight attendant. Is the career really worth it? First of all, congratulations. This is such a personal question, but I always tell new hires because I've heard a lot of people say this, that they're just trying it out to see. You're gonna know in six months, you're either going to love this job or you are going to hate it. I think being a flight attendant, in my opinion, is kind of like avocados. You either love them or you hate them. There's just, there's no in between. This lifestyle is so unique. For me, this job has definitely been worth it. I love meeting new and different people. And I really enjoy being able to hopefully bring some sunshine to my passengers. And of course, my main job is making sure the passengers are safe, but I really enjoy the interactions between the passengers and the flight crew. I just, I'm a people person, so this job is, perfect for me. And the big one is I hate routine. I love surprises. I love not knowing what a day holds. I have difficulties even setting a daily plan for my life because I don't like knowing what I'm going to do or who I'm going to meet up with. I am incredibly spontaneous and I just love winging it constantly like my name for this channel is literally my personality it's my dream job maybe it's not yours but you're gonna find that out honestly pretty quickly as you get thrown into the lifestyle you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it what can be done about the airplane smell honestly this is where i'm really thankful for sage essential oils and their rollers sometimes the plane just smells there's just nothing you can do to fix it we as flight attendants will sometimes put coffee in the lavatories to just help bring the smell down if you are booking your seat yourself then i would try to book somewhere far from the bathrooms bring your own essential oils and wearing a mask on the plane actually really helps as well what i'll do is i'll put essential oils and drop them in the front of my mask and then you're just smelling nice smells please give more tips to pass the interview be relaxed be confident be yourself take initiative in the group interviews dress for the job you want to have so kind of dress like a flight attendant if you know what i mean i actually have a whole video about the interview process again i'll link it down below and hopefully that will help you get ready for your interview also this is hush hush but i'm working on a little project to help with the whole interview situation so keep an eye out for that it's coming and i'm really excited about it because it was something that definitely helped me nail the job does anyone else like to crunch their eyes cheers what is your favorite place to fly to i think for work i really miss flying to japan and i always love flying to hawaii Here's a spicy one. Is there a lot of romance going on between flight crew? You guys ask such interesting questions. I think that just like any other job, there is romance, obviously. This industry allows it to be easier because you're seeing a coworker you may never see again for years, or you could see them next week. You just never know. Um, I think it's the same as any. Career, really there's always work romances somewhere here's a nice question how's it going how are you I think people who ask these kind of questions are just the nicest people I am doing great there is a lot going on right now so I think my next video might be an update kind of video currently I'm doing dry January and yes this does seem to be a full Christmas tree inside of my drink but it's fine this is actually rosemary and its purpose is to be a garnish, but when I take a drink, it's going up my nose and really believes much more for its destiny than, than it should be. So I'm gonna take the rosemary out. If you're gonna be a garnish, be a garnish. That's all I request. Dry January is actually harder than I thought it would be because I guess I am a social drinker and when there's all these events happening around the beginning of January, I am, um, drinking water but this drink has made it a lot easier I actually just did a video the last one I did on this cranberry ginger mocktail if you like Moscow mules you're gonna like this drink is so incredibly delicious however the video did not do very well so I guess my audience is not into mocktails which is fair because frankly 
I'm not really into mocktails most of the time either. Give me the real deal, you know? But it's there, I'll link it in the description if you feel like being healthy. This is pulling me through. Anyway, I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you. You were raised in what city? I wasn't, I was raised on a little farm out in the middle of absolute nowhere. Did you have a different career before becoming a flight attendant? My first job was like a blogger and that was back in like the early 2000s when it was not cool at all. I also developed recipes for online magazines. I would do interviews, just blogging stuff, but like early 2000s style. That was a lot of fun. I literally had to write down all the things that I used to do because I did so many random jobs. I was a stewardess for dinner yachts. That was a fun job. I did event hosting. I also was a personal trainer. I went to college for two years for that. That was a waste of time. It really was not for me. I think my first grown-up job was being an optometric assistant. So I did that for a few years. I've been a barista. I've been a server. My most unique career was I grew up in a family band. So we sang and traveled all over North America and did concerts and festivals and sang and played instruments. And it was a really good way to see North America and meet interesting people. So music's still a really big thing for me. I was a personal assistant for a fashion designer for two days. <laughs> but I really hated doing that. I did modeling for different runway events and bridal shoots that I really enjoyed. What else? I moved to Vancouver actually for acting. So I did a little bit of acting before I became a flight attendant, but that was cut short. But I did some like low key stuff, nothing that anybody would know because I clearly didn't make it. So that's all the things I can think of at this time. I think I have too many questions here for one video, but I'm gonna finish with this one. Do you live in Aruba or Toronto? How do you manage your commute? I'm so confused. So first of all, I am Vancouver based. So I live there when I'm working but for the majority of my time, I'm here in Aruba. The commute is very doable, but it's not always easy, if that makes sense. Now, thankfully, there are more flights from Canada to Aruba, so it's not as hard as it used to be. Oh, and this person added another question onto it and said, how do you typically bid for your monthly schedule in terms of days worked versus days off? So how I have been doing in the past is I will bid for the last two weeks of the month and I will waive all the rules with days off that I'm supposed to have, etc., etc. So I can fill up those weeks with solid work time. And then for the next month, I will bid the first two weeks on. Basically, it adds up to working a month straight, but then I also have a month off. So one month on, one month off. And that has been working for me the last while however i am not gonna lie it is exhausting i've worked 17 days in a row had one day off and then you're gonna work another 14. you feel a little bit crazy so i don't recommend it it's just a way i have been doing it but honestly going forward i'm gonna be changing it so that i have more days off in between because i'm crazy enough as it is i don't need to actually like diagnose as clinically crazy because that's what happens when you don't sleep. Just saying. You could take that schedule and just put in a few days off and still work something pretty similar. I do it this way so I don't have to commute back and forth so much and so that I have a maximum amount of time here on the island. Well, I think that will do it for questions for this video anyway. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you all so much. And I am so sorry that I have been very bad at uploading videos lately. Life is just 
a lot right now and I definitely want to get back into the habit of doing more of them so I will I will try I didn't get to all of the questions but if you have more please drop them down into the comments because I definitely can do another Q&A sometime in the future if you have not already please like and subscribe it helps so so much and I will see you very soon in my next video